Welcome to season three of The Skinny. I'm your host, Shazan. So many things happening all at the same time. Incredible conversations and movements that have been ignited and reignited. Much to learn and even relearn. This season on The Skinny, we dig deeper, cutting the fat and getting right down to the nitty gritty on topics that impact our lives. I'm so excited to highlight amazing stories and facilitate impassioned voices and conversations, eager to share, learn, grow, and evolve with you into more amazing, enlightened, and empowered souls. So come on, honey bunnies, let's do this. Hi, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of The Skinny Witch Chaison. The majority of the times when we hear about fashion or think about fashion, the initial image or images that come to mind are more than likely women's fashion. Right or wrong? I'm sure (laughs) the majority of us are thinking, "Mm, yeah, probably women. The interesting thing is that according to Forbes, there has been a significant shift in shopping behaviors of men compared to that of women. And First Sight's recent consumer study reports indicate a significant shift in the shopping behavior compared to that of women. And this is both uh, online and in traditional retail challenge, which is a stark difference to what history showed us, that women were always ahead of the game when it came to shopping. So I started digging around to see if this also applied to the resale thrifting industry, and I couldn't find specific stats on the world of men who thrift. And this prompted me to go a little further. I went on social media, started looking up hashtags pertaining to men who thrift and was somewhat surprised about how little I found. And the hashtags that I did find had very few posts in comparison to the thrifting hashtags for women. So to get more insight and information on men who thrift, which feels like a secret society because I know they're out there. I have met men that thrift and are quite dapper. And I I was surprised that it was just so difficult to pull up what I thought would be just readily available. So I went ahead and invited an amazing gentleman to be with me on the show today. He's a husband, father of three, a banker and consumer loan advisor for almost a decade in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he's resided for the past 24 years. He's a graduate of Langston University, which, by the way, is the only HBCU in Oklahoma. He's also a member of the Omega Sci-Fi fraternity since 95. And I'm so excited to say this part, an award-winning best male thrift influencer. And this is none other than Derek Johnson, aka Thrift Agent on Instagram. And so a little bit about Derek, in addition to sharing his incredible thrift finds for mind-blowing prices, along with the ways that he styles and incorporates these finds into his career and leisure looks, Derek is also the creator of Sunday Shine, a weekly series primarily highlighting other gentlemen, creators, shoe lovers, and thrifters, with women making appearances as well. And I had the honor of being one of those ladies. And so I am so excited to have him with us today. Let's jump right in. The conversation starts now. Derek, thank you so much for being here and congratulations. (laughs) Well, thank you. I I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It is my pleasure. So you are hot off the heels of the 2020 Heart of Thrift Conference, where you were awarded this official title by the community. Uh, How are you feeling about this added title to all your other accolades? (laughs) I mean, it's awesome. Uh, It's 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 great to to know that you that I'm providing value. You know, in a lot of uh, the thrift community, they're Mm -hmm. they're. They are, you know, appreciative. They're showing love, and uh, it's a, it makes you feel good, like you're actually doing something for the thrift community. Yeah, yeah. So let's start at the beginning. Where did you, or when, were you introduced to thrifting, and by who or what circumstance? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Um, growing up, um, we were me and my sister. We were not big into brands, mm-hmm. and uh, my my mom was uh she was a worker she was the only one that that worked my dad was a stay-at-home dad so it was just you know us there in the house to where we didn't have we only had the one income right Mm -hmm. so when we went out and got shopping for our items it was it wasn't any name brand clothing you Mm -hmm. know so 
as a child, it kind of made me uh, kind of realize the importance of, of a dollar, you know, right. uh, being able to make do with what we had. And I think I was telling you in the comments earlier today about how how grateful I am that, you know, my my mom and dad put me and my sister through college on one income. And it, it made me kind of realize that, you know, uh, you can do it. One parent can do it with one, you know, with one income coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that showed me a lot. And and also um, going to college, you know, there were times when I remember my mom and dad would give me 20 bucks for the week. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never forget this. Uh, 20 bucks would have to last me through the week. They uh -huh. also brought me a loaf of bread, uh, some pop. I know you guys call it soda in California. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a pack of bologna, uh, some cheese, and some uh, a pack of uh, ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that would have to last me for the week, even though I did have a, you know, a meal ticket that I can go eat. But it kind of showed me how to stretch out your dollars. Right. 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 So after graduation, um, you know, I started getting into, you know, uh, more of a fashion, trying to look better, you know, uh, style my clothes better. I was had just graduated from Langston. So it was kind of I was working in corporate America to where I had to have slacks and nice shoes and so forth. So that's where it kind of started for me. Okay. Um, but as far as the actual thrifting aspect of it, I would say about 10 years ago. Okay. And what do you love most about thrifting? Um, well, I like the, what I most love about it is, is basically trying to find unique pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you're going to find one of a kind pieces at, at a lot of the thrift stores. They're not mass, you know, uh, they're not mass Right, right. So you're going to find those unique pieces uh, to kind of set yourself aside from everybody else. So do you know a lot of other men who thrift as well? Um, I don't. I know I have a few um, of uh, on the in, on Instagram. Uh -huh. You know, we have uh, what teacher wears. He's a big he's a big into thrifting. I have a couple other guys, but it's, it's a small community. You know, it's not a lot of us out there uh, that that do a lot of thrifting on the on the Instagram or social media. As far as here in Oklahoma, Tulsa, I mean, not a lot of guys thrift because it's not it's not as accessible as like those those bigger cities. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ha so, have you converted any of the guys in your area or anyone in your family? along your way over the past 10 years my daughter oh, okay um, <laughs> my daughter at first you know she's she she was real big on the name brand you know nikes and all the newer shoes but now when i go out and shop for shoes she's always asking me hey dad you know if you find me something in a four and a half you know send me a picture of it and i you know pick it up for me so uh -huh. i've kind of converted her a little bit. My son, uh, he graduated from high school this past May. Uh -huh. His entire outfit, graduation outfit, was all thrifted. Uh, uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's kind of passed it down to the family, you know? Okay. Okay. And that's the thing that um, I love is that when you can have these important or major events and be able to go completely thrifted from head to toe, knowing that you've found these amazing pieces they more than likely were very inexpensive or inexpensive and no one's to tell no right. one's to tell you know and but what do you think is the reason that the men in the thrifting world aren't more highlighted do you think that it's just they don't talk about it or do you feel like it's something where they just don't want people to know it may be a little bit of both. I, I think, um, you know, uh, men, a lot of men don't really, really care about their appearance. And mm -hmm. that may sound kind of bad, but, um, you know, a lot of guys are out there and they're just, they're just shopping. They don't, it doesn't fit right. Or, um, you know, they don't care how much they pay for it. So it's not really a big deal to them. I don't think, mm -hmm. um, I know I have my son, my stepson, um, he, um, he's, he's not a thrifter at all. Mm -hmm. I remember I one time with me and he didn't even want to go into the store. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like, Mr. Derek, I'll stay in the car. <laughs> you can go ahead and go in there. So 
I think it's more of a they just maybe not introduced to it as much as maybe uh, young ladies. Yeah. I'm not really can't really answer that question. That's a great question, though. I, I wonder about that because it's something that it's so incredible. I go into the men's section. I go into the, the men's department for I'm always looking out for my son. I'm always looking out for my husband. And so because I've been thrifting since I was so young, that's just a natural part where I know that I'm going to be able to find amazing things and throw these looks together for right. for them, you know? So I go and I get things there. You might have the different types of resale shops where they have the price point might be a little bit higher, but it's still considered thrifting. There's so many amazing things things that you can find in the men's department um, right. at the stores. Yes, I always wondered about that because I'm like, I wonder if it's something where, again, there's this stigma that's run along the whole thrifting world for quite some time, which is actually being shedded more so now about like the the idea of it's cheap or, you know, something to look down on. That's That's really being shed. But I wondered if that's something that's still pretty prevalent in the men's department. So I'm so glad that you're talking about it because it's something that I feel should be more highlighted, which is why I wanted to to do this. So can you find a lot of great designers and brand names in the men's department? And do you specifically seek out certain brands when you're shopping? I think it, it, it depends for me. Um, mm-hmm. I, the, the first department that I go to when I go into thrift stores are the, the shoe departments, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, a man has a nice pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, I think that's one of the first things that young ladies will look at on a gentleman is his shoe. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can find nice quality shoes. I can find out in Edmonds at, um, at, at, at the thrift stores, you know, um, uh, Magnani's, those, those are higher end shoes that I've found in the past that I just clean up, you mm-hmm. know, online, you, in, you may pay three or $400 for a pair of Allen Edmonds, okay. you know, I, I get them for 10, 15 bucks at the thrift stores, you know, as long as they're not heavily damaged and not heavily worn, you don't want to bring home a pair of shoes that you really can't repair. You know what I mean? Right. You said that shoes are like your first department area that you go to if there are men that aren't thrifters but would mm-hmm. like to give it a try well, what tips would you pass on to them in terms of getting started i know one of the things you said uh is that you head to the shoe department first but right. what are some other tips for thrifting on a whole including the shoes but also with clothes yeah but and i know it can be overwhelming for for anybody because some of those you know thrift stores and those uh, Salvation Armies and Goodwills are huge, right? Mm-hmm. So you can kind of get overwhelmed. But I think you need to have a plan first. Um, you want to have a budget, kind of have an idea of what you want to spend um, and actually have an idea of what you want when you go into the stores. You know, you don't want to have a, you know, just an open mind to where you're just going to go find anything that you want. You don't have an idea if you want to pair of pants, if you're looking for a shirt for work, if you're looking for uh, you know, a sport coat for, you know, for date night or whatever it is, have a plan of what you want to do mm-hmm. and know what, um, what colors or what letters are on sale for that day. Mm-hmm. Now here in Tulsa, we have every Wednesday at Salvation Army, it's 50% off on everything in the store. Okay? Wow. So those are things that you should know if, you know, if, if you're a thrifter, if you kind of have an idea of what you want to do, Go on that day. You want to go early mm-hmm. because of by, by 11 or 12 o'clock in the afternoon, people are going through everything and it's all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you also want to make sure um, that you have a nice fit for your clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, they have dressing, you, dressing rooms. Use them, right? Yeah. Use dressing rooms because you, you, normally can't take those items back if they don't fit. Right. So those are just a few tips that I would give. Um, you know, also don't be so trendy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with us older guys, you want to have a nice uh, classic pieces in your wardrobe that you can kind of mix and match your grays, your blacks, 
you know, your solid colors that you can wear with different, you know, uh, multiple wears. Um, yeah. You want to make sure it fits, you know? Yes. So in 2019, um, a report from a study done by First Insight, it was titled The Rise of the New Male Power Shopper. And right. this report revealed that men are now shopping more than women across the board. And the Ford's article talked about the results showing that the majority of men tend to follow this utilitarian approach to shopping. And that is actually an approach designed to be more useful or practical rather than attractive, where that's typically the direction that the women will go in <laughs> more for pleasure and right. what's nice. Um, so men are shopping to get get things done. So these tips that you've given is it's very purposeful and intentional, which I think is really great to have that in mind when you're doing thrifting, because right. like you said, it can be very overwhelming. But do you agree with it that men are more direct in that way? Their approach to shopping is more of a purposeful and practical approach? I, I agree with that um, because I feel like, you know, men, women are a little bit more patient than, than men. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to sound, you know, sound off base or anything, but that's my experience is, you know, uh, my wife can go into a store and she can be in that store for four or five hours. Easy. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. um, but me, I'm, I know what I want. I'm going to go in. If it's not there, I'm walking out. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Men have to realize that you have to be a little bit more patient. You might not always find something within the next, within the, you know, the first 15 minutes of your, of your journey into the store, because you have to dig, you know, a lot of those items that you find, they're behind the item. Uh, you know, it, it may not be in the right department. You know, a lot of times we get impatient to where if it's not right there, then we don't want to fool with it anymore. So yeah. if we're patient, search the items, ask some of the workers that are there. You know, um, I have an actual uh, sp or specific um, first store that I go to where they have a bin in the back room for me. And I'll just, what? I'll go back. It's like VIP. Hold you know on I mean? a minute. Hold on a minute, Eric. I am so sorry. I have, with all the thrift, <laughs> with all the thrifters that I have known throughout the years and have spoken to, I have never heard someone having a bin put aside for it. Now that is VIP business right, right there. Right. Oh my God. I'll, I'll give you the name of the actual thrift store. It's called Super Thrift. It's here in Tulsa. It's a newer store. It's probably been open maybe a year. Uh huh. Uh, I went in one day and uh, I bought a few pair of shoes. And then like the next couple of times I went back, and I said, so do you have any more, more shoes in the back? And they were okay. like, sure, we have in the back. So I go in the back, and it's like a trough full of shoes, okay. women's shoes, men's shoes, kids' shoes, right? So I'm going through it. So anytime that I go into the store, they know exactly what I'm coming in for. Mm -hmm. They'll just take me back to the back. Mr. Johnson, we got a boatload of shoes in the back. Go on back there and take a look and let me know if you find anything. Listen. So I mean, they, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even get that. You do not even receive that type of first class VIP treatment in the regular department stores. So no. if you ever thought that thrifting was something, you know, to look down on, let Derek change your mind. Mine is, the, I mean, I'm blown away. <laughs> Yeah, but this so. is um, some of the major online thrifting platforms are like Threads Up, Poshmark, Etsy, Depop, and eBay. Do you do any of your thrifting online as well? No, I've never done. I've never done any online uh, shopping. I know that uh, you can find great deals on you know those those sites. Um, I've even thought about being a reseller to do that, mm -hmm. but um, but no, I, I've always. I like to go and actually touch the item. Yes. You know, and actually get a feel for it. Uh, that way, if I don't like it, I don't, you know, I can, I'm not stuck with it, you know? Right. I, I totally can understand that because I'm someone that's very um, texture driven. So I like to feel the texture of the fabric, which is going to let me know if this is something that will last 
for a long time because that's always my intention is something that I can hold on for a long as long as possible. All right, so let me right. tap into your thrift influencer expertise. Right. Do you have a strategy? <laughs> you know, I'm going to be using that with you all the time now. But do you have a strategy to putting your looks together? Example, like, do you start with your shoes first and then pick your outfits? Or is it from head down? And that's a good, that, it depends on that. It depends on the day. Uh-huh. Um, like today, it was kind of gloomy and dark and cold. Mm-hmm. So I started with my shoes. Okay. You know, I went darker tone on my shoes and kind of went, from bottom up. Um, so it kind of depends. I, you know, I would classify my, my look as clean. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm not into trends. Um, I'm just a, I'm just a classic guy to where if it fits and it looks good, if I don't care if it's brand or name brand, if I got Mm -hmm. a thrift store, it's going to fit, uh, it's going to look nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So are, are shoes your favorite things to thrift? You always head there first. Is that your favorite thing to thrift? It's kind of, it's, it's been, ch- it's changed into that mm-hmm. probably the last, maybe the last maybe year, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, but before that, it was always clothing. You know, okay. um, I can't remember the last time I bought, I bought a pair of jeans, a pair of Le- Levi jeans for like six bucks about two, three weeks ago. Um, but the majority of my time is spent in the men's, in the, uh, shoe section. Okay. And I get a lot of that from, um, there's a young guy, he's on, he's on YouTube. His name is the elegant Oxford mm-hmm. and restore shoes. And I was addicted when I started watching this channel about a year ago mm-hmm. and he would take a pair of thrifted shoes and just transform them. And that's why I think that's where I got that, that, uh, the passion to restore thrifted shoes. Uh, okay. Okay. So let's transition into Sunday shine. Um, there's a lot of conversation about extending the life of clothes through upcycling, refashioning, repurposing, um, which is essential, of course, to more positive effects on the planet by keeping them out of landfills as long as possible. Um, one of the ultimate goals, of course, is minimizing or ending the throwaway culture that is so prevalent right now. It's like wear an outfit three times. It's considered old. You toss it out and um, or replacing our excessive consumption needs with alternative options and skills that will help us to maintain what we have or upcycle what we have or hold on to what we already have. So this goes for shoes as well. You personally are exemplifying and of course championing ways for men to live a more sustainable life, not only by choosing secondhand for your clothes, but also for your shoes. And this is remarkable because I know for me as well, and um, while we communicated earlier, at the point when we both got into thrifting, we didn't realize the connection to the planet and the effects, the positive effects that those choices were actually making on the planet. And now it's, you know, it's evolved and there's so much more awareness. Thank God, which it still needs to be a lot more awareness, which is why we're doing what we're doing. Um, But with what you're seeing here with the shoe restoring, what prompted you to start the weekly series, Sunday Shine? It was just an idea. Um, um, I take it back to Sunday. I went to church every Sunday growing up with my mom and my dad and my sister. So Sunday was, you know, you get dressed, you put on your Sunday's best, you put on your nice shoes. So that's kind of where it came from. Um, So it's just a platform that I like doing with, you know, non-thrifters, thrifters. The majority of my guests are thrifters. And thank you for being one of my guests. Uh, I believe it's last month, I believe, is when it was, right? Yes, a few weeks yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So you did a great job on upcycling uh, one of your pair of heels. Uh, so that you. was awesome. And the feedback is crazy, Shay. I mean, people are commenting and saying, wow, that's a great idea. I'm going to try that. And just to know that we are adding value to someone to give them another way of, of you know, making that shoe last a little bit longer than, you know, than throwing it away, you know? Yeah. Thank you so So. much for sharing that. I mean, and even having me as a part of the platform, because before you invited me on to be a part of that, I was watching because I was so blown away by 
all of the things that could be done to restore your shoes and to extend right. the life. Because um, like you were saying earlier with me getting into thrifting, I, I started thrifting with my mom when I was nine years old, when I mm-hmm. moved here to um, America. And so that was a financial decision and necessity for us at that time. And it just evolved from there. And when I got to a point in my career where it it didn't have to be a choice or I didn't have to do that, I still wanted to because I loved thrifting. I loved the ability to create this unique imagery that reflected my personality and style. And then as time went on, realizing that, wait a minute, this is having an impact on you know, our planet and it's having a major impact on our planet. So it's something that um, I'm very happy that uh, that awareness is there. And Mm -hmm. I'm also grateful that anything that I'm doing can have an impact, any type of positive impact or encouragement to someone else, because they might not be doing it with the idea of the planet. They might be doing it because that's all that they can afford. So being able to show these options as to how you can make what you have look how you want it to or make it look better than what you, you know, originally got it for at a price that you could afford. I mean, that melts my heart because me getting into refashioning and upcycling came from my thrifted um, pieces that I had trying to do a little zhuzh and glam it up to make it, you know, look how I wanted it to. And I wasn't into name brands either. We couldn't afford that. So I never even grew up on that. Even though at school you get picked at for not being in the brands, but um, it's just a way of, it's just a way of life and being able to pass that on to someone else that might be at a different place in their life dealing with it is, is so humbling to me. It It really is. Yeah. And the, the, the series, uh, basically, uh, and I don't think I told the audience what it, what it really was. I was kind of talk, start talking about what, what we do. <laughs> yes. Please elaborate. <laughs> so it's a weekly series every Sunday, mm-hmm. uh, around 11 a.m. Um, Tulsa time. So, yes, but, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, every Sunday, what we do, we feature uh, a thrifter, a non-thrifter, anybody who who uh, loves shoes and the maintenance of their shoes. What they do is they'll take their favorite shoe, uh, they'll style it, they'll they'll upcycle it, they will shine it. Uh, I have women as well as men. Uh, my youngest guest was an eighteen-year-old guy from Singapore. Oh my gosh! I think yes. I saw him, and he yes. had a whole business. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. it's amazing. Eight years old, has his own shoe shine, shoe shine business. Uh, did an excellent job. He had, his video was so long, I had to put it on my IGTV shape. Because mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. it, like it was like 20 minutes long or something like that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, he's my youngest guest. But uh, mm-hmm. basically what they do is they come on they come on IG, they send me a video. You send me, if you want music to it, you can have music to your, to your feature. You just tell us about your shoe. Tell us what you love about it, what you did to make it better. Uh, introduce yourself. And I mean, it's just a great series. That's, that's I didn't think it was going to be this big as far as people wanting to do it. Uh huh. Because you know? I started this back in January and I was like, OK, I'll do this for a couple of couple of weeks. Right. I won't. Nobody wants to do this. Right. Uh-huh. Well, I started asking people, reaching out to people. People start reaching out to me and I'm booked until next year. Wow. So, it's something that I never thought would be like this. I didn't think that someone who had 2,300 followers mm-hmm. could feature someone who had 15 or 16,000 followers would want to do that for, for yeah. the little, for the little guy, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's been a blessing to, to, to do that and, and, and feature people and, and add that value to my audience. Yeah. It's, it, I, to anyone that's listening, it's something that you have to see. Sunday Shine, it really is amazing. The transformations that are done is mind blowing. I have seen some things on there that the Lord above probably did not want me to know that I could do to some shoes because I was already <laughs> doing some things. <laughs> um, how do you find that the guests that aren't reaching out to you? How do you find these other amazing shoe aficionados? How do you locate? Your guess. Well, 
I, um, a lot of them, um, you know, they're actually, their followers and I'll follow them and I'll look at their page. And if I like, you know, if I feel like they may be someone that can appreciate a shoe, I'll just reach out to them. And I say, Hey, I like your, I like your page. I like what you're doing. I like the content that you have. Would you be interested in being a feature? Um, I've only had maybe one or two people uh, not want to do it because they're camera shy. They don't want the camera to be on them and uh-huh. they don't, you know, and I understand that, you yeah. know, everybody's, they, everybody doesn't want to be on camera all the time. So I, I totally get that. Yeah. But most people that I ask, they, they, they'll do it. They have no problem doing it. Yeah. Yeah. The way that you take a $3 or $5 shoe from the thrift store and make it look brand spanking new is absolutely <laughs> out of this world. And just the other day, you shared a makeover of a pair of Hanover long wingtip shoes. Wingtip. Now, I don't know these other than because I have okay. been on your page. <laughs> I don't know these names until okay. now. And um, you bought this for a whopping five cents. Nickel. Right. Yeah. Nickel. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> was this back there in the VIP box? Now I have to wonder. <laughs> These weren't these weren't in the back in the VIP box, but um, the 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 thing about it is is that day I went into this to uh, it wasn't a it was a super thrift mm-hmm. and um, I saw the pair and I liked them they were, they were beat up right but I if you know if the leather is is in pretty good shape it's not a lot of creases there's no holes um, but the sole was 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 pretty beat up it was pretty much gone right so I did have it have the soles replaced. But, but, uh, so I go to the line and they're like, okay, this is six ninety six, And I was like, okay. And it was like, well, Mr. Johnson, would you like to use your rewards points? Oh boy. I'm like, I was like how much I got on my rewards point? <laughs> <laughs> and she said like $6 and 90 cents or something like that. I was like, of course I'm going to use my, my points. Right. Right. So she took it off and it came to five cents. Oh my okay? gosh. Now check this out. I had a dime in my pocket. <laughs> Gave her my dime and I got change back. Oh my gosh. I right. mean, I yes. was like, when I saw, when I read your caption, I was like, <laughs> what in the thrift heavens, no monkey games kind of deal is that? I I just didn't even know. I was right. like, five cents? Yes. Oh. yes. yes. Yeah. And, and that's something that a lot of men and women should know about their thrift stores. Some thrift stores they have it to where you can have uh, rewards points. So if you if you shop there a lot, you start adding up points, and you can use those points whenever you want to to take uh, you know take to get credit for off your off your purchase. Yeah, yeah, which is amazing tip too because yeah. you can now go and go in and find out if they do have it because some places might not be offering up that information. Um, right to everyone. So that's, that's an excellent tip to actually find out if there is a point system there. So you work with cobblers for mm-hmm. some of like the intricate repairs that are needed. Is this something that you would recommend or suggest that people keep in mind as well while they're looking through the shoe department at the thrift stores? Is it expensive to rep- have repairs done? It kind of depends. Yeah. It depends on where you go. Um, I have this one cobbler that I've been using uh, he's done the last two pairs. Uh, it kind of depends on what kind of sole you get and how thick the sole is. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you look, when you're looking at the shoes, if the soles are soft at the bottom, mm-hmm. they need to be repaired. They need to be replaced. You don't want a soft sole of your shoe, right? Mm-hmm. So you take it to a cobbler. I think my cobbler charged me like $110 to put a double oak sole. Now let me let me back up because you say you were kind of confused about what a what a wing tip was. Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, there's so many names because you have so many different shoes that you've um, restored. So when I saw that, I was like, "This sounds very chic." I don't know what it is, but okay, <laughs> <laughs> I will take it and run. <laughs> okay. I'll give you one tip. Uh, <laughs> A wing tip, if you notice on top of the shoe, there's a there's a pattern. Uh-huh. And if it's it's made like a wing of a bird. It's like a wing, a oh, W. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now that makes sense. That makes right. total sense. Okay. 
So that's your wing tip. So anything that has that W on top of the shoe looks like a wing. That's okay. your wing. Now you have short wings and you have long wings. Mm-hmm. A long wing is that piece runs all the way down the side of the shoe. Okay. Okay. If it's, if it's a short wing, it stops off like in the middle of the shoe. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so everyone <laughs> listening, please go to his page so you understand. I mean, these makeovers are something to see. It the the restoration that's done is completely mind blowing. I know I've probably said that a few times already, but seriously, it's it really <laughs> is. And um you have to see them. Especially these shoes that were five cents. Right. Yes. <laughs> what are some of the basic shoe care products that you think men should have on hand to care for their shoes at home? Well I think you need you need a kit. Uh, you can get a kit at on Amazon. You can get a brush, 100% horsehair brush. Mm-hmm. All right, where you can brush your shoes. Uh, you definitely want to have shoe polish. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started off using kiwi, okay. which you can get you can get at Walmart. Uh, but I have since upgraded to a product called Saphir. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit more expensive on Amazon, but it's a better product than the kiwi. Um, you want to have some cream polish. It's a two different cream. You want cream polish. And then you have also have your, your wax. Okay? okay. Your wax puts the shine on the shoe and the cream polish actually nourishes the leather. Okay. Okay. Sense? Yes. Yeah. So it's like keeping it moisturized right. and then the wax. So, okay. As a woman, I'm thinking you have the moisturizing conditioner for your hair and right. then you have the oil sheen to give it the glow, which is what the wax would be. <laughs> break it down, Jay. Break it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because then I'll be able to remember what's for what if I connect it in that way. So, okay. Yes. Right. Um, so are you up to playing a quick game of thrift trivia with me? Go ahead. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So, um, Americans throw away over 300 million pairs of shoes each year. How many years does it take for shoes to decompose in a landfill? Is it one to two years? Is it 30 to 40 years? Or is it 10 to 15 years? Oh, my God. Okay, read those answers again. Okay. One to two years. Uh Uh-huh. 30 to 40 years. And 10 to 15 years. I'm going to say 30 to 40 years. Yay. Okay. That's right. Uh-huh. That's the one. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay. Is it possible for a consumer to completely change the color of their thrifted leather shoe at home by themselves? Or does it have to be done by a cobbler? You can do it yourself at home. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. So to find the most goodies, when is the best time of the day to go to the thrift store? At lunchtime, right before closing, or when the store opens? Oh, that's, you know, what can it be two answers? Because Tell me, break it down. <laughs> I would say in the morning. Uh-huh. And, at, and the reason why I say in the morning is because you want to go early when no one's there. You want to be the first person or the mm-hmm. first, you know. And then at night you want to go because they're putting stuff out for the next day. Mm, yeah, I didn't I didn't think about that part. That's that's smart because yes, in the morning is the best time because everything is right. fresh and new. But yes, at closing, that is that's a smart move, Dee. Mm-hmm. A smart move. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So, oh, and the other little thing too before the next question that I'll add on to that is that usually on the weekends is when everyone's going to the thrift store to do their donations because they typically do it when they're right. running errands and stuff. So Mondays and Tuesdays are also amazing days to go because yeah. you have all the new stuff that are on the floor. That's another tip for you guys. Okay, so yeah. here's the last question. When do you get the best deals on clothing in the thrift store? Is it when the items are in season, out of season, or it doesn't affect the deals at the thrift store? I say out of season. 
Ding, ding, ding. You're on it. That's right, Thrift Influencer. You got your award for a reason. <laughs> I win. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But here, I don't know if um, if you know about this, but while I was doing the reading of articles and doing some research for us today, mm-hmm. I had no idea, but the midsoles in sneakers, which so many people will, you know, they throw them out or right. you just flip them, you know, if they start lifting or whatever, you lift them and just toss them. But they last in a landfill a thousand years before they will decompose. Wow. Blown away. A thousand years before this thing will decompose. So you have tons and tons of shoes that are just out there out there and yeah and then the the souls are just they'll just be there until whenever i couldn't believe it it's like the 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 whole manufacturing of these particular things is not with any consideration as to the end life right so it it sits there but i couldn't believe it a thousand a thousand years that's that's wild yeah yeah yep and um, the other thing, too, <laughs> I always tell everybody that comes on here, I'm so nosy. So I'm always like reading, reading. And then I just read more research, more research. <laughs> right. For us, we talk a lot about clothes, about, you know, in the landfill, because in the landfill, it takes about 200 years for these fibers to actually break down. But, you know, here it is that shoes are a part of the concern as well, but it's not talked about as much. But yeah there's so much behind the scenes on all of this stuff. But again, yeah. with, yeah. with us thrifting and, and donating and, um, you know, restoring and upcycling, it's such an important thing. It's enjoyable. It's extremely enjoyable to do. And it right. makes such a major and positive impact. So um, yeah, but Derek, thank you so much for being here. This was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Can I say this? Because I did not know until I met you, uh-huh. Uh huh. What upcycling was? I had never heard that term before. Wow. Yeah, I know because I was like, "What does that mean?" And then you kind of, you kind of broke it down to what it means uh-huh. uh, on one of your uh, posts, and I was like, "Okay, oh, I get it now." But I had never heard that term. Wow. Thank you for <laughs> telling me that. It's sometimes you're doing things and you're just doing them, but you are not even sure if it's if it's doing anything to, if it's making a difference, because I'm just putting out what I love. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why we do this so that we can, you know, it's for enlightenment and being able to just share insight with, with others. So please tell everyone where they can find you so they can stay in the know with everything that you're doing. Okay. You can find me on Instagram, uh, thrifted gent. That's T H R I F T E D. G E N T. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I don't really do anything on Twitter. I'm mainly okay. on IG. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations again. The hugest congratulations. I was so excited. <laughs> I hope that we can team up again on yeah. some other great projects soon. I would love that. And um, yeah, come back. Right. We definitely can, you know, we can talk a lot more about men's fashion and all of these great right. restoring things that we can do with shoes. Right. <laughs> so thank, thank you for having me. Uh, your podcast is nice. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know you had one. Otherwise I would have been following you a long time ago. So I'm glad I found out you had a podcast. So thank you for inviting me and, and uh, having me on today. Oh, oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And um, guys, that's a wrap on the underrecognized and fascinated world of men who thrift. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, review, and share the skinny with others. Let us know your thoughts, takeaways, and give your feedback on moments that stood out to you. It's truly important to us as we continue to evolve and grow this amazing community. If there are topics or guests that you'd like to hear on the show, please don't hesitate to drop us a line. You can always find us at our main portal, Shazon.com. That's S-H-A-Y, Z as in zebra, O, N as in Nancy, dot com. For all the goodies and the latest updates on the show, head over to Instagram and follow The Skinny Podcast. 
And for a peek inside the life of the voice behind the mic, follow at Shazon on Instagram. You've been listening to This Skinny with me, Shazon. Thank you so much for sharing your time and light with me in this space where you are heard, seen, valued, and loved. Never forget you're beautiful and deserve to live a happy and empowered life. Meet you back here for next week's episode. Bye, honey bunnies. Mwah.